When starting out a new project, choosing the right technology that is best for that project is a critical part of being an engineer. In this video, we are going to be choosing the technologies for our full stack user feedback SaaS application called askusers.io that we are building out throughout this series. If you're not familiar to the channel, what we do here is we take a real world project and we develop that project from scratch purchasing a real domain right up to deploying and launching that project. If that's something that is interesting to you, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're alert when I publish new episodes to this series and please be sure to check out the previous lessons in the series. In order to choose the technologies that we are going to use, the first step I recommend is understand exactly the problems that you are trying to solve. If you are working with a team of designers or if you have a really well laid out project plan, this would be the best time to go through that project plan. In this case, we do not have a designer, neither do we have a project plan, but what we are trying to build is a really, really popular product. So what we are going to do is look at our competitors and see what they've done and see the problems that we would most likely run into. So let's get started by checking out canny.io. Now, Canny.io first of all has the marketing website and you can see that the marketing website has a couple of pages, actually many pages. And when you visit each page, it's, it loads fast and you can see more information about the product. You can also see about us, pricing, resources, and it looks like there's a blog and the blog takes us to another tab, but it's still under the same domain and there's a bunch of stories, right? Now, this is most likely the first requirement that we need. We need a marketing website for the business, askusers.io. So that's the first requirement. Now, when we visit the sign up link or the login link, you will notice that the login takes you to a subdomain of canny.io and not the actual, which means that this is most likely a completely separate application and this application is a dashboard where we can interact with our content or users or feedback. And then there is also the site. If I visit the public view, I would see my site right here. And this is also going to be on that domain. So it looks like we need two separate applications. First one for the marketing site. And second, we need another one for the actual dashboard where users interact with the app. And it looks like the dashboard is linked with the feedback tool where users get to interact and comment and see the roadmap and things like that. Now let's look at ClickUp. You would see that they have their website and then it's on the subdomain for Kani and then they have their boards and their roadmap displayed there. Okay. So what are the requirements for the marketing website? Number one, it has to be super fast, really fast because we do not want to lose customers. Number two, it has to be very optimized for search engines. We should be able to find askusers.io when we search on Google. Now, those requirements are a little different from that of the dashboard because the dashboard is an actual web application where users will be able to log in, log out, persist a session, fetch data that is specific to their use case. Now for the marketing side, I would highly recommend choosing what we call a static site generator framework because this is going to generate the marketing pages before even deploying, and then we would be able to host these pages on a content delivery network. Now I would recommend using something like Nox.js if you're in the Vue.js world, using something like Next.js if you're in the React world, or Gatsby if, if you're also in the React world and want to use GraphQL. But Nox.js and Next.js are the two that I highly recommend in this situation. So that's going to be for the marketing website. Remember our aim is to statically generate the pages and the pages are going to be very tiny, which means it's not doing any loading when the user visits the website. It's just fetching those tiny pages and displaying to the user. Now these are very, very good for SEO and they are also very good for performance. So that's it for the marketing page. We would have a separate web app either built on Gatsby, Next.js or Nox.js to statically generate the pages. So any static generator can actually work. You just have to make sure that you're choosing the right tool for the job. Now the next concern is the dashboard. The dashboard is a separate web application. Now this web application has a requirement. The dashboards for the users or for the customers or for the businesses like clickup.canny.io needs to be 
indexed by search engines so if i search for a feature trying to find out if clickup has that feature then i want to be able to find that on google so which means that we need a web app that can be searched engine optimized but it also needs to be a web app where people can log in log out control their sessions view data that is specific to them now in such situations statically generating would not solve the problem yes it's going to solve the problem of seo but the fact that we have different sessions for different users and different pages that are auto generated based on the users that are locked in then we do not want to statically generate this and remember static generation is best for projects that do not have consistently changing data so for example if we are using a static site generator like gatsby on this website then it means every time someone comments or creates a new post it would completely redeploy the website and if we have about 10 comments per minute and it takes two minutes to deploy our website then that's that's already a disaster what i would recommend in this case is again next.js and nox.js but not as static site generators but server-side rendering frameworks server-side rendering frameworks will not generate the pages but they would server-side render our pages so that they are really good for seo and they are also incredibly fast because after the first page load everything else is client side rendered so next.js is really good at this nox.js is also really good at this so they are kind of hybrid frameworks they can do server side rendering and they can also do static side generation so if we are going to go with the react side we would have the next.js project for the marketing page that is server side we would have the next.js project for the marketing page that is static site generator and we would have next.js for the dashboard or for the customer portal which is server side rendered okay so we've talked a lot about the front end technologies that we want to use let's talk about databases now if you look at the dashboard you would notice that we have very very related data so we have a board and then inside that board we have posts and then inside that post we have comments tons of comments and then those comments also have comments of their own and then those comments belong to users and then those comments can also have reactions and files and then those posts can also have votes now this is a ton of related data and i foresee our database being a user has this and a user has that and a comment has this and a comment has that that's a lot of related data and in such situations i would just recommend going with an sql database most likely mysql for the project now in cases where you want to use mongodb right now mongodb has made tons of improvements such that the difference is not very great so in such a situation i would just recommend going with a database that you're more familiar with because they are almost very similar nowadays but mysql is always the best choice for highly related data so you don't get to implement some anti-patterns in mongodb for the back end of the application we can use really any back end framework to build the back end in this case we are going to be using something amazing called tensejs and i think it's a great opportunity for you to see how you can literally build the back ends of your applications safely fast and securely in literally minutes and tensejs is the fastest and most powerful way to build node.js apis and we would have a full dedicated video just to build the backend and trust me it's going to be less than 10 minutes all right so the most important part of this tutorial was mainly the marketing page and the customer portal and i think we've broken that down and really explained why we should choose the technologies wisely so always remember Static site generation is great for marketing pages, for customer portals where we are going to have sessions and different users with different data sets for them, then server side generation is going to be best, especially when we need SEO. Finally, for your database, if the data is really related, a user has comments, a user has posts, a post has votes, a vote has a user, just use a MySQL database. And for the backend, always use the fastest route to get the job done.
Of course, you have to think about scalability. So these are also things that you want to check before choosing the backend. In this case, I've just chosen Tensei because I am completely biased and I'm the creator of that project. But I really want to show you how amazing it is and why exactly I'm choosing it for such a massive project. All right. So I hope you had fun. Please go ahead and leave some comments below if you have any questions at all. If you have an application at work that you're trying to build and you don't know what technologies to use, go ahead and also comment below and I would help out. You can also tweet at me and I'll definitely reply to you. If there's any other thing you want to learn in this series or anything I missed, please go ahead and comment and I would gladly make a video for those. All right. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe and remain notified for the next video.